Hello YouTubers. Well, before I start this video, I wanted to take a moment just to say um, a very heartfelt thank you for all the kind words, encouragement, and support after the last video. When I announced I was making a change to the channel, I was a little worried about how that would be received, and uh, yeah, you guys surprised the heck out of me. Um, so, thank you very, very much. I read all the comments. I didn't respond to all of them because there was just so many <laughs> in all the emails. Um, and to all the new patrons who signed on uh, to support the channel, welcome and thank you very much. So, uh, that said, let's get on with the video. What was that? Did you hear that animal? It was an animal, I'll tell you that. Well, we'll come back to that. So just, you know, make your guess if you want down in the comments as to what you think that animal was, but we'll come back to that. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of things you can do with Audacity. Audacity is a free and open sourced audio editor. It's very popular. I've used it uh, exclusively for my audio editing t uh, tasks for the past several years. And especially with my uh, videos, I edit all my audio in it. Uh, so we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about something that I find really, really fascinating, but I'm also going to give you something really practical. So first off, the practical. Let's say I was recording a voiceover outside and there was an annoying bird that uh, was picked up in the recording and I didn't find it until I was editing later and I needed to get rid of that, that annoying bird. So let's listen to a uh, a theoretical sample clip of, let's say, a narration with an annoying bird. This would be an example of a typical narration, although interrupted by an annoying bird. What can I do about that? So, yeah, the bird was not really covering my voice, but it was very apparent in the audio, and I might want to get rid of that. Well, in uh, ham radio, if we had a signal that was in the pass band that was annoying us um, and, and interrupting or interfering with our reception of the other station we're talking to, we might use something called a notch filter. And a notch filter, if you have, let's say this is a line, right, from zero hertz to 20 kilohertz, the audio band, and let's say that there's an annoying noise right here, a notch filter would create a dip, a null, right at that point that would null out that annoying signal. So uh, in Audacity, can we duplicate the functionality of a notch filter? Yes, we can, but it's not in the tool that you would have expected it to be in. Let's go to the computer and I'll show you how I can use a notch filter in Audacity to get rid of that annoying bird in that sample clip. All right, here we are in Audacity and I have dropped my screen resolution to 720p to make things a little easier for you guys to see. This is the audio clip. Let's just get rid of a little bit of noise, uh, blankness at the beginning, and get rid of some of the blankness at the end just to make this a little easier and cleaner. Okay, let's listen to it. This would be an example of a typical narration, although interrupted by an annoying bird. What can I do about that? So that bird is a distraction. Well, and I said we we're going to use a notch filter. First off, let's look at it, the uh, waveform in the spectroscope view. Okay, if we click on the title of the track up here, we've got this spectrogram view. And I used Audacity for a very long time before I discovered this, and I don't know why I didn't discover it earlier. This is similar to like the waterfall in FL Digi. We're looking at audio energy over a range of spectrum from 0K to 8K. And there is our bird right there. You see those little swoops right there? That's our bird. Of a typical Mary. And it looks like he's going right from about 3K up to 4K. Well, let's uh, go up here to the, well, first off, we'll select all. And then I'll go up here to effect and we'll go down here to graphic EQ. And our bird was between three and 4K. So here's our notch filter. Look at this. We'll just take and drop the levels at that frequency. 
This would be an example of a typical narration, although interrupted by an... And you can hear that that reduced the bird. Now, you can sort of see a darker band here where we've reduced the audio level. This would be an example of a typical narration, although interrupted by an annoying bird. What can I do about that? Okay, so that greatly, that reduced the bird. Let's, let's hit the effect again. Now this is gonna affect the tone of my voice a bit, but will it make it a little easier to understand without that bird being a distraction? This would be an example of a typical narration, although interrupted by an annoying bird. What can I do about that? So yeah, that, I think that would be acceptable. Um, you can certainly understand what I'm saying. It makes it sound like perhaps the microphone's a little bit weird, maybe not. I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like the hampering of my vocal clarity uh, is enough of an impact to uh, uh, outweigh the benefit of reducing that bird. Let's listen to it one more time. This would be an example of a typical narration, although interrupted by an annoying bird. What can I do about that? So I think that would be a fine result. Um, the bird's still there, but it's way in the background now, and uh, we don't have the interference. So there you go, a notch filter in Audacity. The parametric equalizer can be used kind of like a notch filter. And now that, that'll work if the, the annoying sound that you're trying to notch out is not in the same frequency range as your voice. Although you could notch out a little section of that and still be understandable, it might sound a little odd. But in some cases, using the equalizer as a notch filter could definitely help you with uh, getting rid of something that you don't want in your audio clip. Okay, let's talk about the fascinating thing, or at least to me it's fascinating. Um, time stretching. I love slow motion video. Um, I don't know if you guys have watched a channel called the Slow Mo Guys. They use high speed cameras to create slow motion video of, of things that you would normally not be able to perceive, like a bullet piercing a balloon, as an example. Um, I love slow motion video. When you slow things down, you can see details that would normally escape your perception because our brains can only process information so fast, right? And if things happen really quickly, we just can't perceive them. So slowing them down, you can perceive them. The same is true for sound. Uh, in the opener of this video, which I'm going to use that opener for anything related to sound, I took my coffee cup, I hit it with a pen, and I slowed it way down and turned it into something that sounded just like a great big Asian temple bell or gong or something. Um, that, that, that's just really kind of cool to me. Well, also, you can find details in sounds and things that you would normally not perceive because they happen too quickly, or you can completely change the character of a sound. Uh, let's go back to the computer and, and look at a couple of examples of this. With the help of a friend of mine, Keith, call sign, ham call sign K7OTP, I recorded some mechanical sounds. First, we recorded his diesel pickup truck engine, and then, since he had his dirt bike here, we recorded the sound of his dirt bike engine. So here's the resulting recordings of the truck and the bike. We're going to start with the truck. Let's listen to it. Sounds very mechanical. Now, to stretch time, we are going to change the speed. So I've got that section highlighted. Let's go up here to Effect, and we'll go down to Change Speed. This would normally be used for changing the pitch of an instrument. Um, you could uh, change the RPM of a vinyl record you sampled. I mean, there's, there's several practical uses for this, but what we're going to do is we're going to slow this way down. Let's go down 100%, close to it. There's 90. Let's see what that sounds like. I'll hit preview, and we'll hear a preview of the sound slowed way down. Oh, that is so interesting. Let's apply that. Mm -hmm. 
That almost sounds like a train on the tracks, but it's the mechanical sounds of the uh, lifters, undoubtedly. And I went around to the other side of the engine and recorded some over there. Let's see if it sounds different on the other side of the engine. Here's the raw. And we'll go ahead and repeat our ch change in speed. Fascinating. So, uh, yeah, I, I think we're hearing the lifters and the valves. Very mechanical, very interesting sound. And we could even go slower, of course. We could uh, go back here and change speed again. Not so much since we're already slow. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. So really interesting mechanical sounds. Uh, so yeah, you can simply use that change speed to slow things down and hear details you probably wouldn't hear otherwise. Of course, the other thing we sampled was the motorcycle. Sounds like there's a lot going on in there, so let's go again to change speed. We'll take that down to way down, 90%. Let's see what that's going to sound like. Wow, it's a two-cycle engine. We can actually hear it breathing through the intake. Okay, so let's hit OK and listen to it for a moment. Isn't that fascinating? I mean, you could see the pulses and you could hear where it missed right here and where it missed right there. Let's uh, just listen to that. Oops. Let's just listen to that section. And I think that I recorded at the exhaust somewhere in here. Where was I? Yeah. yeah. This was at the exhaust end of it. Let's uh, highlight a section of that and go back here, change speed. Well, that's interesting. Um, and I think over here I had him rev the engine. And I was uh, over next to the engine while he was doing that, so let's go and listen to that. Oh yeah, okay, we're going to listen to this. So you can hear the uh, the pulses increase in power as he opened the throttle, and then you hear the speed begin to increase. Fascinating. So mechanical sounds are just amazing when you slow them down. So many details that you miss. Pretty interesting, huh? Or at least I think it is. There's all kinds of uh, interesting things you could do with sound there. Um, you know, you could go around your house and just, uh, just record sounds. Um, oh yeah, getting sounds into your computer. Uh, I use a digital recorder, which I'm using right now to record my vocal track. Um, they're not that expensive and uh, you know if you think back to well back when I was young I used a, a little portable tape recorder and later on bought a pocket tape recorder and those were a little pricey back then you know in, in that day's money and uh, digital recorders nowadays are getting pretty cheap um, you can probably get a, some of them for under a hundred dollars even and if you like sound you got to have a digital recorder uh, it's just so convenient to capture sound and then just take them right into your computer via the memory card. Uh, but anyway, um, in going around and banging on stuff, I discovered that just about everything rings. Usually you can't perceive it, but if you slow it down, you can hear a ring. 
um, I was, well, even rocks. Rocks will ring, believe it or not. Here's the sound samples from me hitting that rock. I like that one. Let's uh, let's zoom in here, and I think it's about that long. Okay, and let's change the speed on this. Remember, I said rocks ring. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> let's slow it down even more. Wow. It almost sounds like a metal container, doesn't it? Remember, this is a rock. Is that amazing or what? That's a rock ringing. Let's uh, go really slow, make it sound like a huge, huge gong. Would you have ever thought that that was a rock? So, back to that clip at the opening and that strange animal in the woods. What do you think that was? Any ideas? Well, another area that I like to do slowing down sound, uh, slow motion sound, is bird song. Birds are fascinating to me. I used to lay in my treehouse when I was a kid and just listen to them singing all around me. The robins and their twilight song, you know, the sparrows and the, the other birds. Um, their songs are very complex. Uh, there's a lot of different notes and a lot of changes and, and, and runs up and down through notes and things. And I've always wanted to really pick those apart and listen to all the little details of their vocalizations slow motion sound or, st or time stretching with the tool in Audacity is a great way to do that. It's also really interesting to look at bird song that is so complex that it's, it's hard to fathom what's going on. One example is a grackle. Now the grackle is, is I think it's common to Europe as well as here in, in North America and probably Canada, it's probably everywhere. Um, it has a very bizarre call. It kind of sounds like a sci-fi laser gun blaster. Uh, I recorded some when I was uh, down in Rockport, Texas. And, uh, well, here's the original recording. Isn't that a strange sound? Well, when I slowed that way, way, way down, that's where I got that sound from that you heard in that mysterious clip at the beginning. That's a grackle. That's part of its call slowed way, way, way down. Now this is my original recording of those birds, the grackles. Let's listen. Isn't that amazing? That's so complex. Listen to that again. And what I did, of course, was change the speed, stretch time. Let's take that down to about 90%. Oh, we got to listen to this in its entirety. So there you go. That was the mysterious animal. You never would have thought that was a bird. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, there's lots of interesting, uh, interesting details in, uh, in sound. So uh, anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you on this video. Um, a couple of things about Audacity. It's a great open source audio editor. It's available for all three major platforms, uh, Linux, Windows, and Mac. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you haven't checked it out, um, take a look at Audacity. And if you have it, well, there's a couple of new uh, ways you can apply it and maybe find something interesting in the sound around you. 
Okay, well, that's it. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.